The Prentice also Heating and Air Coaches Quarter, fueled by Donut Country and McDonald's Murfreesboro on FM 101.9 and AM 1450 Murfreesboro, FM 100.5 Smyrna, and streaming at WGNSSports.com. This segment of the Coaches Show as we talk about Smyrna Bulldog football brought to you by the law offices of John Day. They've helped thousands of people get legal help when they've needed it the most. If you've been injured, call the law offices of John Day. Matt Williams joins us, the head coach of the Smyrna Bulldogs. And, uh, Coach, you have uh, been at this for quite some time. Uh, last night, we, we've had we've played in a few tropical downpours and wind but last night has to rank up there pretty good yeah i would say so um we were talking about i can't remember the hurricane name but i think it was 04 somewhere in there and um you know i was defense coordinator sitting up in the box and at smyrna and just remember the plexiglass windows just shaking back and forth and uh i think we were playing blackman that night and their, their punter kicked a punt or punted a ball and it went actually went up and went backwards so um, I don't think it was that bad last night, but uh, yeah, it was uh, probably a close second. Yeah, yeah I, I, there was one year also that teams decided to play on Thursday night instead of Friday, trying to beat the weather, and it came in sooner. And Thursday night's weather was terrible, and some, you know, and then uh, the few that stuck it out and waited for Friday had a really nice night. So oh, you that, just yeah, never that know. Was, Do you remember that, that year? That was the same year. Oh, yeah, was it? Okay. We, we, we played on Thursday night. It was awful. And uh, <laughs> Friday night, it was beautiful. So, yeah. uh, but you never know. That's, you know, that's, I think that's the thing with this one. If, if we'd all played on Thursday night, it would have been pretty, you know, pretty uh, acceptable weather. And uh, But you just, uh, you never know with the weather forecasters. So. Well, well, I mean, the forecast for Thursday did not look good at all. And that was supposed You're to right. be the start of everything. And so, you know, you roll the dice one way or another. I think one thing that's different now is you, like many other of the teams here in Rutherford County, have the turf. So how much did that play into let's just keep it on Friday night? A lot. I mean, you don't have to worry about, you know, if you had a grass field last night, I'm sure it had been awful. So, uh, yeah, in fact, it's a great deal into it. You don't have to worry about that, as you know, the aspect of it. And, uh, so that that's, that's a nice part of it. I was thinking about that driving in yesterday morning. You know, I just – it's crazy how things change, and you know when you've been in a long time, and you, you take something like that, you, you used to have to worry so much about it. It, it helps not to, have to worry about it. And and the worry is maybe not as well, maybe as equally to the game itself and playing on a wet surface, but what it looks like afterward, because you still have more games to play, and you can really do a lot of damage to a field. Oh yeah, we yeah. There's no question. I mean, there's been times in the past where you know you have to come back and roll your field after a muddy game and uh, just hope that uh, you know that you still have some grass left. But you know, we've always been blessed. It's one of high school. I think it's something that you know, Mr. Rice, Robert Rice established. You know, I think we always had a really really nice field, and so we never really had any terrible you know terrible games where the field was just destroyed. But uh, we've I've played on, you know, as a coach and as a player, played on some pretty rough fields. So it was nice not, last night not to have to stand in the mud and the muck. Well, you and I both have been around the block, if we can remember 2004, you know, and, <laughs> and still doing yeah. stuff at that point. But uh, last night was uh, a good win for your team, uh, beating McGavick 23 to nothing. And, you know, we been, were talking about how – most teams probably went into it with a couple of things. So let's start with, with the coin toss. Do you do you uh, want the ball? Do you defer? You pick which side of the field, and all of that plays into that simple toss of the coin. Yeah, I mean, we. I, mean, I told our captain. I told you know, Brett Williams uh, is one of our captains. I told him that we're we're going to defer. And obviously, want the wind to our back. So in that in that case, we want to be facing the scoreboard and. Luckily, that's exactly how it started off. And, you know, I think there's two schools of thought. You either want, you know, in my my mind, you want to win to start off with unless you get off to a good start. And, uh, you know, the thing about last night, though, I don't think it really mattered. You still weren't going to throw the ball very efficiently unless it was just a short passing game. And uh, But, yeah, it actually worked out the way I wanted it to as far as the start. And it actually helped us in our kick game, especially on punts. Uh, you know, LeBar Nor last night, our, our kicker punter, had just a um, crazy night. I mean, his first punt was like a 47 yard punt. He, and McGavick on like the three. I mean, the ball, I've never seen a ball check up like that. It was with the wind. So when he kicked it, he boomed it. And I said, that's going in the end zone. And it hit and hit, went straight up in the air, laid down, and just sat there. I couldn't believe it. And uh, then later on, he had an 81-yard punt. 
And the thing about that one was he did boom it. It wasn't like it was all wind. Uh, he boomed the punt, and then it hit and it started rolling, but it didn't roll. It rolled long ways. It was crazy. <laughs> that wind sort of caught it and just took it down there. And uh, we were actually backed up when he kicked that ball. And uh, that was a huge play in the game. You know, you, you see that sometimes on the field turf when you get a high bounce when it hits. And I, I saw it a couple of times in the broadcast game we had last night. When it bounced up into the air, the wind just carried it. I mean, it, it was it was like there was an invisible kicker there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, I was proud of LeBar for not just the punting. It was three on three or three for PATs. And you got also, you know, that weather. You know, Brett Williams, our long snapper on punts, uh, obviously did a great job. And Grayson Pitts, our uh, short snapper. And, you know, Britton Judkins is our holder. You know, to be three or three, or three on PATs on the night last night, like last night, and, uh, and to execute your punt game, I, I was proud of all those kids. We've got Matt Williams joining us, talking Smyrna football this morning. Um, the other thing – after the coin toss, you know, when all of that settled, one of the first things you want to do on a night when weather is such a factor is score first. And you were able to do that, and your defense pitched the shutout. So you got uh, two really good things right there in a, in a in a weird game, weather game. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I thought for the most part we ran the ball well. You know, uh, Ryan Carr read uh, 131 yards and a touchdown. And Aiden Augustine had 63. He got a little dinged up, but he had two touchdowns. And, most part, I thought off the line did a good job. We, we, you know, had still got to have some busts we've got to clean up and had some turnovers we've got to clean up. But, you know, that's, uh, I think we would have scored more. We hadn't turned the football over. We turned it over one time inside the 10 yard line. So, uh, you know, those things are, are the type of things that will really haunt you against a good football team. And obviously next week, uh, against East Nashville, those kind of things will get us beat. Uh, so, uh, but I thought for the most part, we did a good job offensively as far as having to adjust weren't able to throw the ball. I think we threw it for like six yards last night or something like that. Um, and Britton threw a couple of good balls. You know, we had some drop balls too, so it wasn't all him. Or, um, but, uh, yeah, I thought offensively we did what we had to do. And scoring first was big. And, uh, you know, we were able to score, you know, uh, when we needed to. And I was proud of our kids for that. And also got a safety and very proud of the defense. You know, I thought, uh, you know, Brody Hines had a really good night on defense. The linebacker had 11 tackles. And D.J. Barksdale, the defensive end, had eight tackles. And, had a, a bunch of kids play really good on defense, but uh, was proud of that group for getting their second shot out in a row. Coach, it, it, I don't know if it's the year or what it is, and, and, but three of our broadcasts that we've had, there's been a safety. Y'all had, you had a safety last night. Is this the year of the safety? I, I don't know that I've seen that many in forever. Yeah, maybe so. I thought we had one uh, before it actually happened, and uh, we forced them back there. We had them inside their five, and they, their punter sort of, I mean, the snapper, excuse me, sort of had a little bit of an errant snap, and the punter stepped back out of the end zone. But before that, we had sacked, uh, almost sacked the quarterback in the end zone. He threw it forward. It didn't make it out of the end zone. And I'm still puzzled on that one because they said there was a receiver in the area, and I looked at it on film, I thought, and there was no receiver anywhere near it. But uh, So really should have two safeties. But, uh, yeah, maybe so. But, you know, I thought our defense did a really good job. Uh, you know, it's easy on a night like, like last night to get lost, you know, in the run game, especially if they were running some – you know, sort of loaded offensive sets, uh, and then, you know, it's easy to get lost in those things. And I thought we played really physical and fast last night, so I was proud of our kids. Um, wet ball is always a concern on, on a weather night. What is what is your procedure? I know a lot of teams do different things. Um, I mean, how do you make sure that there's the driest ball possible out there on each snap? Well, we had to, you know, had a ball boy on either side last night. We don't do that a lot, but on wet nights, we, we like to do that. And uh, Nick Belch is our ball. ball. You know, he's, he's a sophomore. I think he's a junior now, so I like to say ball. He's one of our student assistants, put it that way. And uh, Cole Kill also was on the visitor side. But, you, you know, we have waterproof, I guess it's frog tog, you know, waterproof bags. And they're sort of backpacks, and we put them on them backwards so they're on their chest. And, you know, you can get about three footballs in there and, uh, you know, some we did last night. We also used kitty litter. You know, our wet balls we put into a, a container with kitty litter to sort of soak that moisture up. And so you do things like that and just hope for the best. And we have, you know, certain you know, towels. Basically, I guess you would dry your car off with that after you wash your car that, you know, really water absorbent type towels that we use. So, you know, you do it. You know, it's, it's sort of funny what you do to, to win a football game. But uh, <laughs> we... We try to leave no stone unturned, and so I was proud of you know Nick Belcher and Cole Kill did a good job last night, you know, getting the balls in. 
you know, when you have home games, Coach, you want the stands as full as can be. Uh, home games are very important because the money that comes in helps to continue the program. And I know on nights like last night, crowds are, are generally down just overall. And uh, you, you kind of – there are a lot of things that you're thinking of, you know, in, in that. I meant to ask you about that earlier. But home crowds are very important for the – to continue to – help pay for the program really yeah it's um you know it, it is and you sort of you know I was, last night when i saw you know the one thing we were going to play but i knew we were going to take a big hit and you know you know fans and parents a lot of them don't realize you know we don't get supplemented anything by russell county as far as you know our budgets it's all you know we have to raise all that money and uh you know we're fortunate it's one high school to have some really good supporters and really good boosters but it still is a, is a big hit to you uh, when you don't get that gate money because that's what you're really counting on. And a lot of the stuff you have to order as a football program, you sort of have to order before you know what you're what you're going to have in the bank, so to speak. And uh, it's called fall billing. And uh, it, you know, a lot of those things you have to have to get ahead of time where you get them in, such as helmets, shoulder pads, and, and stuff like that. And um, you know, so when you don't, when you have a gate last light like last night, which I'm sure is going to be terrible, and it was our homecoming as well, which normally would have been a good a good gate mm -hmm. uh you know you have to sort of offset those things so you know uh you know the supporters and people of these programs just need to realize that and maybe try to help out a little bit uh but yeah you know I, last night was sort of an anomaly because obviously usually robert l Rake stadium is going to be you know pretty packed and uh so you just have to adjust and that's just what is what it is yeah maybe if uh you didn't go last night and you usually go or plan to go just pay for that ticket that 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 could help as well uh coach i i don't remember whether we mentioned uh dj barksdale's night last night on defense eight tackles a sack a forced fumble and brody hines with 11 tackles so your defense pitched uh, another shutout you're going to need um you're going to need everybody healthy and ready to go on uh thursday night right are you playing no you're playing on friday at east nashville no, we're, no we're thursday oh are you thursday night at east, east nashville and i thought yeah dj and brody both play really good and i thought our linebackers in general i'm a guy town sophomore came in and had a sack i think a fumble recovery and uh, denzel yarborough played really good i, I thought uh defense back physical and uh you know amar hill um you know jerry martin's always uh you know, a disruptor like Connor Clark and defensive end. I, I saw some good things out of him last night. Thought he played hard. And the thing about Connor, he had to play a lot both ways because offensively we were in some sets we normally wouldn't be in a lot uh, with top, two tight ends. So, uh, Connor, I was proud of him for his effort and, and, and how hard he played on both sides of the football. Well, uh, Coach, good luck on Thursday night. I know a short week and being a creature of habit, uh, <laughs> a lot of times you don't really like having a, the game a day earlier, but it is what it is, I guess. So um, I'm sure yeah. that you'll have a little accelerated practice schedule for the week. Yeah, we will. We'll practice tomorrow at 3 o'clock. So everything will be moved up today. We're going 3 to 4.30 tomorrow. And, uh, then everything has been moved up. So it's, uh, like you said, it is what it is. And yeah, the one name I left out, I meant to mention Zion Blakemore. I also had outstanding night on defense. I thought he played really hard and physical. I don't want to leave him out. But, yeah, we'll, we'll be at East Nashville. I'm excited about it because it's a great atmosphere. You know, they're a very storied program. It's been a lot of, you know, last number of years in a lot of state championship games and, and have made deep playoff runs. So, uh, very excited about it. And our kids will be excited about it. It'll be another great test for us to uh, go into the teeth of our, you know, region schedule. Matt, appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you next Saturday morning. All right, thanks, Brian. That is Matt Williams joining us, head coach of the Smyrna Bulldogs on The Coaches Show, brought to you by Middle Tennessee Electric, serving our community by providing affordable, reliable, and safe electricity online at mte.com. We're at Rick's Barbecue talking with Anne-Marie Brintz, who says they're ready to feed your entire crew with a family pack. It's a pound of pork or any of our pulled meats, and then you get two 16-ounce sides, and then you get a bag of chips, which are plain or barbecued, and then the buns come with it. And then you get one of our drink choices, which is either a two-liter of one of our sodas or a half-gallon of one of our teas. And don't forget the famous Rick's Loaded Baked Potato. That's the biggest potato you can get. They're uh, right at two pounds. Let Rick's Barbecue do the cooking, 212 Warrior Drive. Local business owners, you know how important it is to be here for your customers. I'm State Farm Agent Dana Womack, and I run a small business in Rutherford County, too. I'm here to help you protect your small business. Call me at 615-900-0877. At State Farm, put home and auto...